Okay, so next we'll talk about how to visualize correlations between variables. Um, this is kind of a, a quick review of your earlier stats classes if you've taken them. Um, correlation is just a mathy principle that measures how closely two variables are related. Um, the official formula is this scary thing here. It's the covariance of two variables divided by their standard deviations multiplied together. You don't need to worry about that. That's just the official definition. Um, the thing you need to remember is it's basically a single number that tells you how much the two numbers are related. And the general template that you can use is like as the value of one of them goes up, the other one goes up a little bit or not at all, or it goes down a little bit or not at all. Um, it doesn't say anything about how much that happens. It just says that it does change. Um, and so temperature and humidity, for example, are correlated, but there's nothing in the correlation number that says if humidity goes up by 10%, what happens to temperature? We don't get any of that information. We just learn how strongly related they are. Um, the way the correlation number works is it's a scale between negative 1 and 1. Um, if the number is 0, it means there's absolutely no correlation between them. One will go up and the other one will just stay. Um, if the number is 1, that means there's perfect correlation. So if one goes up, the other one moves up exactly at the same time. If the number is negative 1, it means if one goes down, the other one goes down exactly the same way. Um, if you look at this plot here, it shows some random data that, that follows a specific correlation. So you can see if the correlation is like 0.9, those things are pretty closely related. If you're down in the 0.2 land, you could draw a trend line that would probably fit here somewhere, but it's not like it doesn't fit very well. So the general guidelines, these are just kind of rough meanings for these numbers. Um, you can have modest correlation, moderate, strong, very strong. This is just one scale. Um, other stats classes will teach you other scales. There's no official translation between numbers and labels. Um, it's just, this is just how it is. So it's just, it gives you language to talk about how these things are correlated. So visualizing these things, um, if you're just visualizing two variables, like humidity and temperature, um, if you want to see how correlated they are, you can draw a scatter plot and you can look at the points and see how tightly clustered they are and see if they make some sort of shape. And that's how you can visualize correlations. Um, if you're trying to visualize correlations between lots of variables, though, it gets tricky because correlation only works with two numbers. And so if you want to see how a whole bunch of numbers are correlated with each other, you can't. Um, the only way to do it is to look at how pairs of your variables match up with each other. Um, and so an example of this is something called a scatterplot matrix. And Klaus Wilkie covered this in his chapter. Um, and so in here, this is using a, a different cars data set that's built into R called MT cars. This is cars from the 1970s. Um, we're using this one because it has more numeric variables in there. And so here we're just looking at the correlation between miles per gallon, cylinders, the number of gears, the number of horsepower in the car, and the number of cube sec, which I have no idea what it measures. I know nothing about cars. I just know that it's numeric. I think it's, it has something to do with how fast the thing speeds up, but I'm not really sure. It's just a numeric variable in there. Um, and so there's a package called ggalley um, that has a whole bunch of extra ggplot type things that you can do. One of these functions is called ggpairs. And if you feed it a data set with some numeric variables in it, it will automatically create the scatterplot matrix for you. And it will pair off every one of those variables. So it'll find the correlation between miles per gallon and cylinders, miles per gallon and gears, miles per gallon and horsepower, etc and it'll make a fancy plot for you. And so here you can see the scatter plot between all of the different variables, and it gives you the correlation value between all of the different variables, and it gives you a density plot for the miles per gallon variable, just as kind of an extra bit of information. So you can see miles per gallon is mostly clustered down here. Um, cylinders, there's some down at four, lots up at eight. Um, with gear, there's, three and four and five, it's mostly, those are the number of gears in a car. Horsepower, there's lots of 100 horsepower and then it starts dropping down to 300. So you can see kind of the information about the variable by itself, but you can also see how each of these pairs of variables are related, which is cool. The problem with these scatterplot matrices though, is that if you start getting beyond like four or five variables, if you have like 20 things, do you want to show if they're related and show the correlations between all 20 pairs? 
this is going to get really, really messy, especially if you have like thousands of rows. This is just going to be like tons and tons of dots, and it's going to be impossible to see any stories. So an alternative to these scatterplot matrices is to do something um, called a correlogram that you read about in the Klaus Wilkie chapter here, which are essentially heat maps. They're still kind of a scatterplot matrix. So if you look back here, um, there's the scatterplot. And then over here, you have the actual correlation number. So in this heat map, all we're really doing is taking one of these tr upper triangles or lower triangles and instead of just writing the number, we're filling each of these squares by how big that number is, um, creating this heat map here. So you can see um, the more blue the square is, the more positively correlated the, the two variables are. The more red it is, the more negatively correlated they are. If it's white right in the middle, that means there's no correlation. And so here you can see that like the strongest positive correlation is between cylinders and horsepower in a car which again, that might be a car thing that is natural. I don't know about cars. Um, if you look at the most negatively correlated things, you have miles per gallon and cylinders and horsepower and QSEC, whatever that is. Um, and so this miles per gallon and cylinders shows that as cylinders goes up, your miles per gallon is going to go down a lot um, and that they're highly negatively correlated. So correlograms are cool because this, like you can glance at this really quick and see um, which pairs kind of have the strongest correlation. One issue with this, though, is that um, we see the, the, cor the size of the correlation through the color, but each of these squares have the same size. And so um, it looks like the, the difference between this 0.13 and the 0.2, um, they're roughly the same shade of, of red, of pink here, but this one is slightly bigger. Um, and so it, it's hard to tell differences between these because they're all the same size. And so what we can do is instead of using a heat map, we can use a point-based correlogram where we still map the actual correlation onto um, the color. So we still have that gradient fill, but we also map the, the size of the correlation to the size of the point. So the darker and bluer these dots are, or the darker and redder the dots are, the more correlation there is. And so gear has a very low correlation, and so it has a very small point that is a lot brighter. If there is no correlation, it'd be a tiny point or even an invisible point that's completely white, and you would know that there's nothing there. Um, and so this is kind of a, a cooler way that communicates more information because it encodes the size of the correlation both by color and by size at the same time, which kind of helps communicate that correlation there. So those are a whole bunch of different ways of showing correlations um, between individual variables, but also between multiple pairs of variables. And so this is it's a good practice to get into when you're doing actual data analysis to make a, a scatterplot matrix of all your variables. Um, often the very first thing I will do when I'm before I run a regression is I'll do a giant ugly scatterplot matrix. I won't spend any time improving the labels or changing the colors or anything. I just want to quickly see what all of the, the relationships look like. If I care about the relationships between some of them, I will then make either a heat map or one of these point based heat maps um, for the actual report um, or the actual study so that I can communicate kind of a subset of the correlations between things. Um, but I rarely will ever publish something like this because that's too much information. It's good for like analyzing the data for getting a handle on it, but you're not going to want to communicate that to the general public. This is much cleaner and easier to grasp. Um, so that's how we do correlations.